This is Andy Parwa for ID Boxing. I'm joined by Dazones Ade Oladipo here in Abu Dhabi. Ade, it's always a pleasure to see you. How are you finding life out here? Good. Look, can't complain. I feel um, I feel lucky to be here, right? I, I think, obviously, like, I've been working with Dazone for about a year and a half, and I've been lucky to go to events. When you're out here and the weather and how good it is and you're seeing the fighters and everyone's energy seems to be in a good place, especially because we've had a crap two months in boxing, I feel like I needed this little injection in the arm, so to speak. But um, it's been good. Obviously, a huge fight tomorrow night between Dimitri Vivar and Gilberto Ramirez. Everybody's very much excited for it. Which way do you sway? I'm Team Bivol. It's weird because you're obviously supposed to like be on the fence as a broadcaster, but I like Bivol. I, I, you know, it's, I, I think you, like, you interview a lot of fighters, and sometimes fighters give you good energy or bad energy. And I feel like every time I spoke to Bivol, it's been a really good energy from him. Obviously, I got his top as well last time out. But I think, I think he's a very, very good boxer that's now coming into his own. Um, that win against Canelo, I think, mentally has took him to another place. And look, Ramirez is big. He's a southpaw. He's going to be tricky. But you have to look at the last sort of five or six fights, and his resume is quite thin. I know he's 44-0, and and you have to credit him that you know for that. But he hasn't really fought anyone in that 44 run. Arthur Abraham, Jesse Hart. But you look at what Bivol's done recently, and it's um, it's good work. So. I'm going to favour the champion. I think it's close. It's a 60-40 fight. I think Ramirez is going to start strong. He's big. He's going to put it on him. But I think Bivol's so slick with his feet. Um, his punch selection's good. He doesn't waste any punches. And when he wants to turn it up, he knows how to turn it up very, very slightly. And I think he's just got too many gears for Ramirez. So I wouldn't be shocked if he wins this by three or four rounds. But I expect the first two or three to be super. I expect everyone to be on the edge of their seat for the first three or four rounds. And then I expect Bivol to do what Bivol does and secure the win and then move on to Baturba for Canelo. You mentioned that, speaking to Dimitri earlier in the week, he said that if it was his choice, he'd rather face Arthur Baturba of next sort of disputed. A terrific fight, but what do you make of that play, him rather facing Baturba instead of a Canelo rematch? I like it, I like it. Why look backwards? And I asked him the same thing and, he was, and that's what he told me. Why do I need to look back? I beat the guy. And it wasn't, the scorecards would tell you it was a really razor thin fight. It wasn't. He, he won it by a few rounds, so why go backwards? The main man in the division is Paterbiev. Paterbiev is number one in the division. He holds all the belts but one. If you're Bivol, the dream is to become undisputed. You beat Paterbiev, not only are you the best light heavyweight in the world, you're arguably top five pound for pound. And then you can start chasing the money fights. Whether that be guys coming up from 168 or Canelo. So I, I agree with him. Go Paterbiev. If Obviously, Paterbiev's got to get past. Um, Anthony Yard in January, do that, and then Canelo sometime September, that date. I think right now, that's the right move, but what I like about him as well, he doesn't even really want to talk about Canelo or Baturba if he wants to focus on Ramirez, because he knows it's tough right in front of him. But right now, I think he's in a place where he can pick and choose, and if I'm him, I think the choice, the right choice is Baturba. Looking at the, a couple of fights on the undercard, Chantel Cameron, Jessica McCaskill, a terrific fight, had I split them for me. Dude. I mean, we, we've had so many good, and I'm going to separate. I know people don't like to separate male and female boxing, but you have to separate them. And we've had some fantastic female fights recently. And I feel like this might be one of those that are going under the radar. Like we talk about Michaela Meyer, Baumgartner, and Savannah Marshall, Clarissa, and Katie Taylor Serrano. This is up there with that. You've got a 147 undisputed in Jessica McCaskill coming down to fight the 140 unified in Chantel Cameron. Chantel Cameron's un, undefeated. It's supposed to be Kelly Reese. This is a harder fight than Kelly Reese because McCaskill only knows that way of boxing. Chantel's the better boxer. I think McCaskill's tougher. So it, it, somehow they've got a mix and they will mix because I think we saw the press conference. Chantel's like, okay, I'm going to bring it. And McCaskill's like, every time I hit someone, they run. Chantel's like, I'm not going to run. I don't think Chantel's going to run. I think they're going to meet in the middle of the ring and fight. And I think we could have a fight that's as good as anything we've seen from the top elite female fighters in the last year. I think this one's special. And this is a genuine, and I don't often say this, genuine 50-50 fight. Like, I, if I, I have no idea how it's going to play. If, honestly, any, any outcome, I won't be shocked. Um, but I think it's fantastic. And this is, this is why female boxing at the moment is putting male boxing to shame, because we're getting all the fights we want. Like, all the dream female fights in the head, we've had them. But um, look, it's a great Division 140. They can go up, they can go down a little bit. There's so many big fights around them. And the winner, I guess, has a chance to fight Katie Taylor at Croke Park. So it's not only undisputed, it's a chance to make seven figures next year. So they're fighting for a lot more than just a belt. So um, incredible fight. 
and I think it could be fight of the night. In fact, it will be fight of the night. Zolfa Barrett looks to become world champion in his first outing for one of the versions of a title against Shavkat Rakimov. Very, very difficult fight, but will England have another world champion come tomorrow night? If I'm honest, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Rakimov um, is an extremely good fighter. And look, look, Zelfa's got something that could hurt Rakimov in the sense that Zelfa's got punch output and he's got a really good jab. Um, but I don't know if he's got the punch to stop Rakimov coming forward. I feel like you've almost got a dent Rakimov. If you don't, he can do what he does for 12 rounds. It's going to be tough. But look, you know what? Sometimes opportunities fall in your lap. It was supposed to be Joe Cordina. He's injured. Zelfa gets the call up. Six week notice. And the good thing is, Rakimov hasn't prepared as much for Zelfa. He's been preparing for Joe Cordina, and Joe Cordina and Zelfa are completely different. So he wants to take that. I was just speaking to Pat Barrett outside, and he's like, We're ready. Like mentally, we're ready. Physically, we're ready. But sometimes you can be as ready as you want. If the guy in front of you is just a bit better, he's just a bit better. And Rakimov is very, very good. I remember watching him against Zingi Fuzile. Great performance. Jojo Diaz, good performance as well. It can be hurt. I think we've seen that when he fought in South Africa, but yeah, I, I expect Zelfa to get the job done. Sorry, I expect Rakimov to get the job done. And I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to become a bit lopsided towards sort of sort of 8, 9, 10, 11. But good luck to Zelfa. I want him to win, but I've got to be honest with you, I think Rakimov will win. Just away from his card, get your thoughts on a couple of other fights. We've had reports coming about Eubank Jr. Liam Smith may take place December 17th. Speaking to Barry Jones earlier, he actually says that he favours Liam in that fight. Which way do you see it going if it is rubber stamped? Liam. Liam as well. I know that might surprise people. Um, he's got a good friend here, um, Eubank, that I know, that I've known for a few years, and he's been talking about the fight. And I was like, I think Liam wins. I mean, I'm always on what have you done for me lately. I think Liam's looked good lately. I really do. Um, and I know people will talk about Liam going up in weight to 160. Liam's a big guy anyway. I, I've, I still don't understand how he makes 154. He's been a bit more active. And, and aside from that, I mean, if you really look at Chris's last few performances, I wasn't impressed with Marcus Morrison. And I wasn't impressed in the latter rounds against Liam Williams. So um, we need to see him do a lot better. So I favour Liam, so Liam Smith, but it's a great fight. It's a great fight for Chris. Chris's popularity has grown crazy in the last few months. And I, like the zone are going to be upset that he's not fighting on the zone. But good for him. Good for him. Go and get your money. But I think I edge towards Liam Smith in what will be a fantastic fight, regardless of Smith going up in weight. Smith has been the busier, the better, and I expect him to show that as well. Just picking that back up out here outside, my light died right at the end there. I apologise for that, Ado, but I had one final question just to leave on. We had the news coming out last night that Caleb Plant and David Benavides had signed contracts for a fight next year. A fantastic bout at 168, one which I'm sure will divide the opinions of everybody in boxing. Which way is it dividing your opinion? Wow. You know, I feel like I'm firmly on the fence in this one. And I don't have a dog in the fight, right? Um, but credit to Plant, by the way, because a lot of people have been saying Plant doesn't want the big fights and he's avoiding Benavidez and he's like, no, I want the smoke. I'm going to go for it. We all saw the grave digging of Anthony Durrell. By the way, I didn't mind that. I know some people are going to be upset by that. Anthony Durrell was talking smack. If you talk smack, sometimes people are going to do that kind of stuff. But I love the fight. Um, Benavidez, I feel, desperately needs a big fight. Right? Canelo's been saying he hasn't fought anyone. If Benavidez gets the win over Caleb Plant better than Canelo did, then it's an easier sell. But um, I love it. I think I'm going to edge towards Benavidez just because he seems to have that aura about him. Very much reminiscent of a Kovalev or a GGG a few years ago. So I'm going to go Benavidez, but Plant's good. Plant is very, very good. Don't be fooled by the Canelo performance. Plant can box and he's got power. We've seen that. But Benavidez might be, just might be a special fighter. Might just have that X factor, so I'm gonna edge towards Benavides. Just. I'm I'm, I'm we're talking 55 45. Well, Ado, we'll leave up there now, Lock. So I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your evening here in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for speaking to me and ID Boxing. Cheers, my man. Thank you very much. Um, let's get a drink. Let's chill out. I know Rob's got you working hard, but Rob, let him work. Let him drink as well, please.